people say he ain't no good And I'm crazy as a loon Cause I shave my head in the morning And pick guitar in the afternoon Just like old Chief and Charlie I like to lay around in the shade well, I ain't got no money But you better believe I got it made Cause I ain't asking nobody for nothing If I can't get it on my own If you don't like the way I'm living Just leave this bald-headed country boy alone Heel concrete cutting I have known Sean and his wife for over 20 years, and they are right here from Cochrane, Georgia. They cut, they demo, they remove, they dispose of, they pour, and they'll finish concrete, plus anything else that has anything to do with concrete. They serve all of Middle Georgia, but they're not scared to travel. They've been in existence since February of 2022. Let me tell you, they do a damn good job. Their reputation around here is next to no other. They provide all concrete cutting needs for HVAC, plumbers, electricians, any other contractors, really, for new construction and old. They've got over 10 years' experience. They're a family-owned business, and they give free estimates. I'm telling y'all folks, I've known these folks forever. They do a jam-up job. Please give them a call today for all your concrete needs at 478-308-3439 or look them up on Facebook at Hill Concrete Cutting. You need some construction work done to your house? I got just a guy for you. I need you all to go check out Dennis Farmer with C. Martin Construction. They've been in business for a long time now. They do everything from demolition to pond digging, grading, clearing, everything. This guy is my dude. He's a good old boy. So give him a call now at 478-283-1246. That's C. Martin Construction in South Georgia. Let me tell you about my girl, Miss Erica, with Crooked W Consulting. She has a small marketing and design agency out of North Carolina. She offers small, affordable business solutions that tailor your business and startups nationwide. She's currently doing my new website. I'm telling you folks, you need to let her do yours. She's doing us a jam up job. She also offers digital marketing, graphic design, and social media management. If I'm using her here at the studio, there ain't no reason why your small business shouldn't. Look her up on Facebook and Instagram at Crooked W Consulting or text her now at 919-351-2084. Crooked W Consulting. Hit up Miss Erica now. You won't be disappointed. Let's give a quick shout out to Nobles Networking. Guys, if you're looking for a new internet provider, they hook me up here at the studio and at my house. If you live out in the country and you can't find nowhere else where to get your internet or you're paying too much for Hargrave or any of that other shit, look up Nobles Networking. 478-308-0596. You are going to love it. I'm telling you, it works great for me. It runs everything here at the studio at my house perfectly. Hit up Nobles Networking. Let me tell you about Lori's Dive In in Alamo, Georgia. I ran her ad several times now. She's been with me since I started doing this stuff. Even if it's not convenient for you, take some time, go out of your way, and go eat there. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. She takes pride in her staff, her food, her service, every single aspect. So, Please go check out Lori's Dive In in Alamo, Georgia at 18 Commerce Street, Alamo, Georgia. Phone number there is 912-568-1945. Lori's Dive In. If you've seen me wearing hats lately that's got D-Y-H on it, it stands for Down Yonder Hat Co. Seth Baysmore, a buddy of mine, he owns that company, and he has sent me some of their hats. Let me tell you, I love them. I've worn them in a lot of my stuff lately, and I plan on wearing them a lot more. I've showed them to some of my friends. He has a startup business, and I'm telling you guys, you would absolutely love them. So do me a favor. Go right now to his Instagram at Down Yonder Hat Co. 
Check them out. They also have a website, downyonderhatco.com. Order some stuff from them and tag them on Instagram. And when you do, make sure when you make the post, you say that you heard about the hats and down yonder right here on the Josh Terry Podcast. Now, let's get to the show. There we go. Thank you all for tuning in to the Josh Terry Podcast. Before I leave to head to Nashville, I want you guys to meet one of the newest members of the Raising Grace family, one of the newest artists that we're going to work with. I've had the pleasure of knowing this fella. And uh, is it your wife now? It's my wife. I thought, I thought it was your wife. I, I was about to stick my foot in my mouth. <laughs> His wife for a long time on social media, and we finally getting hooked up after a, a long time of me just watching their videos. I'd like to introduce y'all to Mr. Mark Ware. Man, thank you so much, Josh. And it's good to be down here in Cochran, Georgia. Nobody has ever said it was good to be in fucking Man, Cochran, I, Georgia. I actually enjoyed the ride down here. Did you? You're one less possum, though. Oh, really? That's yeah. what you meant. You said, do you want this possum on the way here? And I, yeah, man, I got on there. I was like, man, where's the next convenience store? Is it a gas station or something? Went until I got to the end of 129. I've, I've seen you had a little town down here, but yeah, hypothetically, uh, may or may not I hit a possum on 129. Well, when you said it, pull your microphone a little bit closer to you. All right. There you go. When uh, when you said that, most people know what a huge George Jones fan I am. And I just, okay. got, a, and I just got a possum tattoo. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck is he bringing me that's a, a possum ta- Or what it's got to do with a possum? And I quickly got what you meant. Yeah, it was a, it was a good trip down here. I'm, I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to meet uh, meet everyone. And uh, just looking forward to, you know, telling my story and uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, gain some new fans from the show. And that's just what it's all about, just trying to, you know, just get folks to come over and listen to the music and stuff. Well, there's a lot of people that uh, I really – really don't mind sharing their stories. Okay. And there's a lot of people I think deserve to get heard. And the more that I've got a chance to know you and follow y'all's, just everything y'all been through on social media, you've always been one. And uh, your family is just like, I'm glad he's doing music and your story and everything, you know, from, you know, losing a child right. to being a firefighter right. to, you know, I guess starting music at not a, not an early age. Uh, well, which I guess he was probably second time around with music, second time actually. around, yeah. Uh, and then uh, you know, I just I think your story's cool. I think there's some tragic parts of it, obviously, yeah. um, that we're going to share with everybody. But I think that uh, I think this is a good way for you to make a connection with a lot of people that probably don't know. Yeah, that's what uh, yeah, that's what it would be all about. Just making a connection with uh, you know with the fans. But you know, I started at an early age. At, you know, with music, and uh, grew up in the Southern Baptist Church, and uh, my parents kind of played music uh, growing up. You so don't sound the, like you grew up Southern Baptist. I sure at did, all. man. I sure did. Uh, you know, I'm a Christian, but uh, not as good a Christian as I should be. Like I, you said. I, I say it all the time. I ain't a very good one, but I am one. You know, so if the bass player ran out, I had to learn how to play bass before we got to the next gospel gig and that kind of stuff. And went to work for the fire department at, at an early age. At, I think I was the last fireman hired at. I think I was uh, in rookie school at 17 years old, so, and I uh, was still doing music on the weekends, and, uh, you know, I'd, I'd built the, my music up, and uh, to a point where I was doing showcases on Thursday night up at the Buckboard in Atlanta with the big boys. I mean, Al Dean hadn't made it yet. He was still coming up there on Thursday nights. Tritt, uh, Travis Tritt, he was going up there with us, so, you know, we were uh, doing some shows for, for John up there when he had the Buckboard, and I was actually offered a little record deal with Disney to, you know, pursue some more music, and Man, things were just going great, and um, I had gotten married right out of high school and divorced about two weeks. Yeah, those always you know, work I mean, out. About two they? months, I guess. Yeah, we that. decided we really didn't want to be married, <laughs> and uh, so we, uh, you know, I got divorced real quick. And out of that marriage, we there was a little girl that we had. Her name was Lakin, and uh, as fate would have it, I wound up with custody of her. So here I was at you know 19 years old, a little girl, didn't know you know. The, how I was going to do this, you know, family didn't have a whole bunch of money. I was going to have to go out and work and raise this little girl. So, um, I did until she was, you know, I, I did, she made it up to about 14 years old and man, music was going good. Uh, music on the weekends was going good. And, um, I was basically getting whatever I wanted in Atlanta at the time or, or around Henry County. Um, whatever I wanted to go play, I was packing out the bars, man, I had a good following. And, um, one day at work, man, I got a phone call and I said, 
you know, it was my daughter. She said, Dad, I don't feel good. And I said, uh, well, you ain't never missed a day of school since pre-K. You think you can make it to 1130? She said, I don't know. I just don't feel good. And I said, well, give it about an hour and call me back. You know, because she had told me she didn't feel good a thousand times growing up. So she called me back and she said, Dad, I feel a little bit better. She was the captain of the cheerleading team over at Eagles Landing. She said, I'm going to even try to make it to cheerleading practice today. And I said, well, that's good. You know, I'll be there at the same time. Picked her up. She got in the car and uh, then she loved her some Chick-fil-A. And I said, hey, you want to run over Chick-fil-A? She said, oh, I really ain't hungry. I still don't feel good. And she just didn't look good, Josh. So I, I said, let's run over here to the doctor to let him take a look at you. And it wound up, the doctor had said that she had a touch of pneumonia. And, man, I felt like about that tall, you know. Yeah. I was like, man, I made her stay at school all day, and she's got pneumonia. And uh, he said, but I'm not liking her vital signs, so let's keep her overnight. And um, let's keep her overnight. And so we were sitting in the room watching Dumb and Dumber on the TV. They had Dumb and Dumber on the TV cutting up and, you know, telling jokes. But her vital signs just kept being all crazy. Her blood pressure would drop and do just all kind of crazy things going on. So they said, hey, we want to transfer up to Atlanta. Something just ain't right. We want to transfer up to Atlanta. Now, keep in mind, this is all about six hours of time. Shit. So I said, okay, well, let's go to Atlanta if you think we need to go to Atlanta. Uh, two hours later, a doctor come in and said they wanted to intubate her. And as I'm telling you, we were just talking just like me and you were, me yeah. and my daughter. And But they said that this infection that they seen in her lung – this pneumonia that they were calling it at that point um, was actually a little bigger six hours later than the original x-ray. So they convinced me to let them put her under on uh, an intubation tube so that her body would relax and they could throw a bunch of antibodies, antibiotics at her. And, um, you know, I've always regretted that decision of, of doing that because that was, you know, the last little kiss I gave her on the cheek when she ever she could talk to me was, was them giving her the medicine to knock her out to, you know, to intubate her. And um, it wasn't 20 minutes after they intubated her, she went into a cardiac arrest. So, uh, you know, that was just was a whole different. Now we're about 10 hours, 12 hours into this thing, and she's on life support. And I'm, uh, I'm like, man, my mind's just going all over the place, you know. Just That's my whole world at that point. It was just me and her. Dude, I couldn't, you know, I I couldn't a, imagine. It was crazy. I mean, I did a lot of traveling softball myself. I know you played softball, and... At the time, our whole high school baseball team graduated and wound up still playing the same positions for five years later on the weekends when I wasn't doing music with playing yeah. softball. Um, so my, my, my mind was all over the place with this. And um, uh, we had called in a specialist, and I wanted a second opinion on some news that they were giving me. And there was a, there was a, a, a device that would, they only had two in the country. It was called an ECMO machine at the time. Now they're everywhere. But at the time, there was only two of them in the country. And there was one available in Texas that we had to fly to Scottish Rite. And basically what it would do was take and clean all of her blood out of her body and put new blood in it, cleanse it kind of like a dialysis kind of thing, mm -hmm. and hopefully grab this infection. Um, so we paid the money to fly this machine to Atlanta and to try to, you know, clean her blood or whatever was causing this infection. And they give you uh, some medicine called heparin. Um, it kind of thins the blood out. And they explained it all to me, and they gave her the medicine, and uh, she had a stroke from the medicine. And, you know, an hour later they said she was brain dead, so it took me about eight hours, nine hours at the time to say okay and let them just pull the plug. And, you know, in 27 hours I, I went. she went from playing football in the yard on Tuesday with, you know, with her buddies and cheerleading practice, you know, the next day after school to I'm planning a funeral. Um, like – it would happen that fast. And what did they say the cause was? It was, you know, if you ever got one of those boils on your legs, um, staph infection yeah. on your legs, you know, they hurt like hell. Yeah. Um, they, everyone carries a staph, I've learned. Everyone carries staph now. And, but, but it can break out. It can break out into these boils. You want it to break out on, on your thighs or around your waistline or whatever. You know, they hurt like hell. but On the outside. On the outside. Yeah. But there's a chance that these boils, these staph infection boils, can pop up on a brain or a heart or a lung or an organ. And hers popped up on a lung. And it was a uh, MRSA, staph infection, that she had. And it wasn't pneumonia. It was a staph infection that they found out she had. And it, it was like her contracting cancer at a million miles an hour. 
and I didn't have time to do the, the, the treatment. I didn't have the time to do chemo. I didn't have time to do nothing. It was just over. And um, so that took, me to a, that took me to a dark place, to be honest, really dark place. And that's where my music career kind of uh, ended at the time. I, fuck, everything would have ended for Yo, me. it did. It did. It pretty much did. How long ago was that? That was uh, 2006. It was in 2006. Shit. Yep. And it's been a it's been a long road, man. And I tell you, if uh, it took a long time, it I was a bad dude. Um, you know, I'd lost my job. I've been arrested a couple times. I've been in Who fight, have been? fighting every bar I've been in. You know, I I would stop in a little place in town and buy a handle every day, and that's how I went to sleep. Was when I finished that handle, I went to sleep. And um, man, I was I was probably the, about the biggest drunk you would ever meet, and um, I lost all my friends. Um, you know, I think the last fight I got in with my dad, rest his soul, you know, he, he died a couple years ago of cancer, but it was on Father's Day. He had picked me up from a little play, another bar, 3 o'clock in the morning. He'd pick me up, bar enter called him, say, hey, look, Mark's over here with some brass knuckles, and he's going to town on some dude's head, and you need to come get him. The police is on the way. And he took me home, and um, me and him got into it. And I woke up on Father's Day in my basement, and my dad was laying on my chest. And both of us were, you know, bloody shirts and scratches all over us. And he looked at me and said, Mark, I'm going to tell you, I love you more than anything in this world, but I'm not coming to get you never again. He said, call me, I'm not coming. You got to figure this out, son. And uh, he was a deacon at the church, you know, at the time, too. And he's like, uh, just do do a favor. He said, I don't care what you do Monday through Saturday. I do care what you do, but I, you do what you want to do Monday through Saturday. But just come to church with me on Sunday. And so I didn't want to disappoint my dad for six or eight months, you know, right after that. So, man, every Sunday I'd go in that church, and I'd have the clothes. I'd, I'd just come in there sideways and run late, you know, and I'd have the church clothes I had on on Saturday night, smell like the bar, and still half drunk. And um, I didn't want to disappoint my dad. And I'd go sit over and sit in the church with him. And... Um, one thing led to another, and they asked me to play some music one day at the church, and I got up there and played some music again, probably still half drunk up there playing music, and I just got a conviction over me, man. I said, look, I'm, I'm bad and everything, but I don't want to be this bad. I don't want to be drunk coming here to church playing music, right? So, um, man, I just got I got right with the Lord. I, man, I gave it up to him, and I'm telling you, I was mad at him. I kicked my Bible in the woods. I've cussed God. I mean, why you take the only thing that ever I ever really loved? was this little girl, man. Why in, the, why in the hell did it have to be my kid? Why couldn't it have been a uh, you know, drug dealer or, or some murderer in prison or something? Take one of those. Why ain't you taking my kid? You know, she ain't never done nothing wrong. She's got, you know, perfect attendance at school. She's on the honor roll. She's captain of the cheerleading team. Why in the hell my kid? So I had to get that right with with God, man. I, had, I really had to get that right. And um, so I did. I laid down the alcohol. And I uh, still wasn't really doing a whole lot with music at the time um, because I had got another job at the fire department, man, and got promoted, and I made it up to a chief officer in the Metro Atlanta department. And uh, so I got to finish my 30 years in the fire service. Um, so I, I kind of got my life halfway decent, you know, where I can walk and function, right? And I hadn't, hadn't dated anyone or, you know, women would just – just I wasn't interested in having a wife yeah. or a girlfriend, you know. And I go get who what would I, you I mean, know? Just shit. I was just uh, still in a dark place, man. I went to Vegas for about two or three weeks, and uh, you know, spent a little bit of savings that I had saved up. I was just it, it, anything I could take, anything I can drink. I was just trying to, you know, just trying to function. And then, uh, so the tragedy crap really don't end there. So, just as I'm getting on my feet, Josh, I'm talking about. As I'm six or eight months clean of alcohol, I hadn't been in a fight in a year, you know. I hadn't been to jail, you know. And uh, luckily, I had some good buddies who, you know, uh, who took care of me, you know. Um, real good friends with some folks that took care of me through all that. But um, I had met this little lady out on the lake, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, so I, me and you know, I got another, I got another kid, Mark Jr. So uh, I was, I had got custody of him. Um, about a year after I was sober. He decided he wanted to come back from Alabama live with his dad. So here I am again, single dad, 
with an 11 year old scared to death that he's going to turn 14 i'm gonna lose him kind of thing so i'm you know i'm God. really trying to get all Ugh. this things squared away this punched me right yeah. now it oh shit um so i met this little lady on the lake right and that's how we know each other that's how we know each other and good old uh, miss kim good old miss kim so uh so look, she don't like rednecks bro right <laughs> she don't like rednecks so i'm, I'm i sent her a message on facebook i said uh hey uh, nice meeting you today. You want to go to dinner? And, she, and I think she typed back something. I'll never pass up a free meal. <laughs> you know? So I said, cool. So I put on a holy pair of blue jeans, jumped on my Harley, and I rode over there to this little place she was living at in my flip-flops and blue jeans and the Harley and gave her a helmet. And I said, she said, I don't, I don't know about getting on the motorcycle. Yeah. So I told you I was going to take you to dinner. So uh, we went to dinner, and, uh, you know, I, I think after that night, we probably seen each other two or three times a week. And um, she was coming over on the weekends, and I guess it was about five or six weeks into this, and we're still seeing each other two or three times a week or whatever and spending time on the weekends. And uh, I invited a bunch of friends over, and we was going to go out on the lake. Uh, a bunch of her friends and my friends would just go out on the lake. I think we was going to a Damon Jones concert or something over at Bear Creek. And um, we was putting the cooler on the boat, and a close friend of mine, a fire chief in Henry County, called me and said, hey, you still seeing that girl, Kim? I said, yeah. He said, man, you need to put her in the car and come up here to the hospital. Her daughter's just been killed. Jeez. Yeah, and she yeah, was uh, 18. I was, yeah. It was like I was telling you earlier, man. I, I can't remember to this day how I got to be friends with Kim and Summer. Mm -hmm. I, I It's probably some weird shit on social media. But I still remember what she looks like, how sweet she was and everything, and I wasn't super close or anything with them. But it, it was just, and it, it was the same thing. It was there one day and gone the next. But I still remember us Snapchatting and talking, and it's, life is just so damn precious, man. I'm it's, talking about a vapor. When they say life's a vapor, I'm living. Man. Crazy. But lightning struck twice uh, with me because oh. I immediately, standing in that hospital room, uh, looking at this family that I've only known for six or seven weeks, Looking at this family, and you know many things going through my mind. Like, look, I gotta find the closest liquor store. Uh, yeah. How do I? How do I end this relationship I just started seven weeks ago? Because I'd be damned if I'm gonna sit at the house and watch all these high school kids come over here, deal with burying another kid, and do all. I said, look, I don't want none of that. None of that in my mind. That's what I'm thinking. I don't want none of that. And um, but but I just I don't couldn't. even. I don't think anybody can knock you for that though. I, I think that most people would have thought that to start off with initially. And that's that's I mean that's immediately what's going through my mind was this poor family and not that I didn't hurt for them and not that I didn't care for Kim or not that I didn't love Summer because I'd already started loving Summer you know yeah. Summer was the family Summer was I remember that what family. I remember what a light that girl was that uh -huh. girl was just a fucking rainbow yeah I mean talking about most popular girl at school I mean it's the same yeah. story you know what I'm saying the yeah. same story and. And in my heart, I was like, look, I just can't do it. I can't yeah, but, do it. Yeah, but dealing with that one time and it being your own child would have literally killed most people. It would. I, I'll tell you right now, I got a lot of respect for you. My daughter's 11. You might as well put my ass in a loony bin. Mm -hmm. If that. Our, our dick, go ahead and dig me a hole next to her. I don't think I could have handled it. And you probably don't think you handled it well. Mm -mm. You probably don't. I think you handled it better than I would have handled it. I think you handled it better than 99% of people would have handled it. The fact that you're still here shows that you handled it better than most people and that the good Lord had a bigger plan for you. Yeah, it definitely uh, was some higher power for sure because, man, I remember saying the exact same thing you're saying right now. That look, uh, something ever happened to my kid. Yeah, you know, you might as well put me in the ground with them and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. Joshua, when they're lowering your life, <laughs> that's it. They're lowering Man, your life, and shit. And then you got to go sit there, and you, you know, and I was gonna have to do all this again. Yeah, you know, because Kim was hurting. She's gonna want to go sit, you know, sit at the cemetery, and she's gonna want to. I'm telling you right now, to this day, that's how we spend our holidays. I, I've cried for Kim. Yeah, I've seen. The social media posts. 
Welcome to BreezeLine, where you'll say, ta-ta, T-Mobile, because we've got more reliable home internet that's a whole lot faster. In fact, 10 times faster. No, seriously, because we have real internet backed by our fiber-powered network. And T-Mobile, well, they just have a 5G cellular network. So act now to get superior home internet. Find your perfect speed with prices starting at just $19.99 a month for 24 months. Terms and conditions apply. Go to BreezeLine.com to learn more. At Kroger, shopping with pickup and delivery is the same as shopping in-store. Same low prices, deals, and rewards on the same high-quality items. It's one small click for groceries, one big win for busy families everywhere. Start your cart today at Kroger.com. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Surgeons keep our hearts beating. They do the amazing, help save lives, and so can you. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that can give Grandpa the chance for his heart to swell when he meets his new grandson or give a bride the chance for her heart to skip a beat on her wedding day. Every plasma donation helps more than you know. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and be rewarded for your generosity. That she's put out there. And I don't think outside of my own family, and I know there's been lots of close friends, I don't know them that well. I really don't. I've seen her hurt on social media. I've seen the pain from her, like her posts. I've seen her pissed off on there too, and it mm-hmm. scared the shit out of me a couple times. Mm-hmm. I've 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 wept up. I mean, I've cried for this woman, and I barely know her. She's the only person I really think I've never put decals on my vehicle. It's like I was telling you earlier. Mm-hmm. I've just always felt close to them. I don't know why. And I remember having the summer the the peace symbol, mm-hmm. and the summertime thing on my Jeep for the longest time. I sold that we'll Jeep. Have to get you another. Oh one. yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, we definitely will. Still do it. Um, but yeah, I, in your shoes in that situation, I think most people would have tucked tail and run. And I, I don't even know if you can blame somebody for doing it. You know, and and, and I try to go to work. You know, during the you know because Summer had to go to GBI for a little while, so it was you know it was a little while before we could have her funeral, um, just because of the accident scene. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on. Her family was law enforcement too, so there was you know they was. It was combing every piece of that accident, you know, yeah. which, and uh, so every day I try to go to work and leave Kim for six or seven hours. And every time I drive away, I was like, you know, how do I, how do I get out of this for the first couple of days? How do yeah. I, how do I tell her? How do we just remain friends? Cause we're, we're really not that serious at this point in time. We're just dating, you know? And uh, every afternoon I just go back, I'd leave work. I'd go right back over there and I'd sit with her and, um, you know, and I'd ask her that, I don't know, it was about a week into it. I think we had just buried summer, and I said, you just want to come stay at the house tonight? And she's never left, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, she, she never left the house. Um, and our bond grew by going, and, man, it just – every little step that we took, um, you know, it just uh, – in some strange sort of way, it kind of helped uh, her and it helped me um, because I, I could see – where she was I could maybe prevent her from headed this way and I'm gonna tell you something that woman's never turned to alcohol not one time has never never put a pill in her mouth not one time um she suffered through this by just gut-wrenching hardest pain you could ever get with absolutely no help man and I'm gonna tell you she is absolutely the strongest person I know I'm telling you and does so much for the community I'll tell you a quick story uh when we get off this don't let me forget just to, but she is the strongest woman I know, and um, but we fell in love through this process. We buried Summer right next to Lake and six inches apart, in the same cemetery, and we spend our holidays changing her flowers, and um, you know we don't every New Year's since 2016, we buy sparkles and we go out there at 12 o'clock and we light two sparkles and we stand there and light two sparkles that's just what we do on yeah. new year's eve um but just the strongest person i know and, and and what we found is 
you know, just telling our story and, and, and helping. We keep the always summer, she keeps the always summertime foundation going. I think they still give scholarships to kids to this day at the high school summer went to, and, and she's still trying to pay it for it. Kim's that kind of person. And I, I see this and we, and together we've been fortunate enough to uh, be able to do these things monetarily. Um, but she was just watching someone on TikTok the other night, Josh. I say the other night, about two months ago. And it was a homeless man and woman in Jackson, Mississippi. And I told Kim, I said, look, look, I understand if you want to send them some, you know, get them a cash <laughs> app set up and send them $10 here or there. But this, this is what she did. She didn't got to know them. And then she called the sheriff and had them run their backgrounds and all this. And she went and got them. And she went, we went and bought them a 24-foot travel trailer. And we went and put it down on Lake Juliet. And we've moved this homeless couple from Jackson, Mississippi, off TikTok, went and rescued them. And they were in a, a slumlord's house. I'm talking about he was telling us he was having to crawl in the windows because he didn't want to go in the front door because the guy, he was charging him $50. $50 a month he was charging him for the room, but he didn't even own the house. They were all squatting. Oh, damn. But they was, he was charging him. But anyhow, we've moved him over here, and she's getting up every Sunday morning going to grab these two people and bringing them to church and uh, taking them to the food bank on Wednesdays, getting them food for the week for their camper. And they just think that they have hit the freaking lottery, man. They're not in a... They're not in Jackson, Mississippi. And what's, and what's probably the damnedest thing about it is it means more to her than it does to them. Oh, my God, man. She would sell our lake house tomorrow uh, and ugh. give them every penny of it. I'm telling Jesus you, she Christ. would. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she would. But, 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 it, it's, uh, but we grew to absolutely just fall deeply in love. And I'm telling you what, um, God has really blessed me with a good woman. And I, I didn't think I would ever be the guy that sit here and say, <laughs> I got a good woman, you know, yeah. and, and never meant what it been. Like, I don't, you know, I don't never even think about running around on her or nothing like that. Just because I would not hurt her. Yeah. You know, it's just, I, I'm a, I'm a big, a I'm a big believer in God allows us to go through hell. So we know what heaven's worth. God almighty, man. Yeah. Like I, I've always like, I'm a suicide survivor from like 2010. And I always say it's the best and worst day of my life. Like, cause I found myself after that. I didn't know I had depression, anxiety and stuff before that. Right. I, I knew there was something off about me. Every time I walk into a room, I thought everybody was talking about me. Nobody gave a shit about me. And I mean, the nicest way, like nobody gives a shit about you. Like everybody's too worried about their own selves to, to really care about somebody else. And uh, so it was just like, I was in a dark place in my life. Luckily, I'm a moron and took the wrong thing, <laughs> and I'm still here. Um, I have to get my stomach pumped and all that. But I don't, I don't think it's our, our good days in our life that make us. It's our bad days. It's our bad days that define us. And they make us who we are. And the shitty thing about life is if we don't go through that shit, I don't think we really get our real blessings. And it sucks everything you've been through. But at the end of the day, you'll probably, and you're still probably too close to the pain and everything now. I, I think anybody would be. I know I fucking would be. But at the very end of the day, when all is said and done, I think you get to see the big picture then, and you realize why. I'm always about the why. Like I used to think that something, if it happened to me, I'm like, why the fuck is this happening to me? I don't mm. understand this. I don't deserve this. This doesn't need to be happening to me right now. I'm doing good shit. Why am I failing or why is stupid shit happening? But it's always when you get on the other side of the pain. When you get on the other side of the bullshit, on the other side of the hurt, you realize, damn, I had to go through that. I had to experience this to realize what my purpose is. A lot of people get confused and they're like, I need a purpose in life. Mm -hmm. I need to understand what my purpose is. Well, I've done tried to like reason with myself and say, what if that purpose is me? What if the purpose in my life was me to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing here and I'm supposed to be paying it forward. Mm -hmm. So like in y'all's cases, instead of it letting it destroy y'all still, you're paying it forward and you're helping people. You know, that's what we found that works, honestly. And we've done that since day one. But when I say works, nothing really works. I'm going to tell oh, you yeah. because I'm going to tell you since March 11, 2006, there's not a day 
there's not a day goes by, yeah. you know, that I don't think, you know, what ifs or, you know, and and I don't tear up. I mean, uh, don't a day go by if I sit and think about it, I'm gonna I'd start crying now if, if you know, just, we, I'll we, cry with we you. Don't get on the I'll, we don't I promise get on to you something positive in Mark Ware's yeah, life, look, you know. But I'm it was right absolutely you. you're right. It was absolutely pure. It is pure hell um, every day. But that's what that's how we found our purpose that you speak yeah. about is, you know. Um, you know what makes us happy is you know just helping and paying it forward and man and and we we fell so in love with each other um and i never thought i'd sit here and say look we don't we, i don't you know i listen to my buddies talking about their wives and their fights and all but, <laughs> you know i said my man me and kim don't we don't really we don't argue you know we don't call each other names we don't we, none, of that, none of that stuff i mean it's a partnership and but, but it's josh it's because we respect each other so much Oh, you uh, have to in we your respect situation. each other so much that she wouldn't want to do anything to hurt me. She feels like I've been hurt enough. Yeah. And I wouldn't do, damn sure wouldn't want to do anything to hurt her because um, she's been through enough. And I, I watch her and what she does for these other teenagers. She's still close to those girls, you know, and, you know, and uh, she still goes to their events. And she has to roll up in there without her daughter. And, you know, we have to roll up there without my daughter and, you know, and it's just uh, those kind of things hurt when we go to our nieces and nephews' weddings and when they have their babies and stuff. And I was like, Man, well, Lakin should have been 30 years old this year. You know, I should have been a papa a long time ago. You know, and uh, my kid never got to be married, you know, never got to experience prom and never got, you know, but we had to do all that, you know. And But uh, you're right, it, it makes you who you are. And, and then when it swung around to this music thing, she was like, Mark, you know, why don't you try music one more time? You know, uh, you, you know, your kids are grown, and why don't you try this music thing one more time? And I'm gonna tell you, man, it's been nothing but a, just a blessing uh, to have her support. Uh, but things have just just took. I never thought that you know, 24 months from now, and that's not my. It's not big for a lot of artists, but 24 months from now, you know, I'd have 700,000 spins on Spotify, and you know, my I'd have you know close to a million views, and you know, on on, on different social media stuff, and. I even got 6.6 .6 million on one view, but you know I would never think that folks would be that interested in my story or interested in my my music. I well, never thought, but evidently there's some folks. Well, that, the more that people hear about who you are mm -hmm. and what you've been through, they're gonna have a connection with you. They're gonna want to hear songs about you. See, that's what makes an artist an artist to me is you have the ability to sing about things that nobody else can. And it's it, it doesn't have to be sad things all the time. It's your life. Mm -hmm. you, you're just like any other artist that the only person that can write the songs that you've lived is you. Mm -hmm. And there are people that have lived remotely close to the same life to you, that's went through the same tragedies, that's went through the same ups, the same downs. And... This is your opportunity, doing the music again now, is mm -hmm. your opportunity to where you can connect with these people and reach your crowd and reach your audience. And it, it's like I say all the time, the people that usually connect with me are not the people that want to make money right now. I'm about legacy. Mm -hmm. I'm about what's the mark that you want to leave. I want people around me that don't really care about being popular right this minute. They want to be relevant in 10 years. Mm -hmm. They want to have an all-time great song. They want to win it's all said and done. They want to have an in color. They want to have a go rest high. Right. They want to have he stopped loving her today. They want something to win. You think of country music or whatever genre you're in, that their song comes to mind. And... Those are the people that I love and I adore. Even if they're even if they're not the best singer or or whatever, or the the best guitar player. It's because they've got a message right. and they they are what country music is. Mm -hmm. get, I mean as shitty as it is to say, country music is about heartbreak. That's country right. is about storytelling. And that's the people I like to be around, dude. And I I mean I hate everything that you've been through. I really do. It breaks my heart for you. But the connection that you can have with somebody, and I'm sure you've had this before already, but I've seen it with other people. I just haven't had the chance to see it with you, is 
when a song touches someone in the crowd and you can tell that they've gone through the same thing that you have gone through, it's like you're seeing them at church. Mm -hmm. It's like they've made a connection and they know I'm not alone. This person has been through the same shit and I adore that. That is, that's why I love writer's rounds, dude. Well, that's, that's exactly where I try to go with, uh, you know, when I'm writing my songs, uh, this one we've got in the hopper now, it's, uh, it'll go close along with your story a little bit. Um, but you know, being in public safety, you know, all my life, really, um, Christmas day, uh, a good buddy of mine that I actually helped get on with the fire department, um, decides that at the Christmas gathering, he wants to go outside and take his pistol out of his truck and end his life. And so I got a call Christmas day that my buddy had, you know, committed suicide and, and tore me up. And, um, first and I woke up the next morning, man, I had these words on my mind, you know, I was like, man, why didn't he call me? You know, you never have to walk alone. You need somebody, just call somebody kind of thing. And, um, but that's, that's coming, man, probably in the fall. It's called walk alone. And, um, I did it live, uh, to a sold out crowd in McDonough, Georgia, about 600 folks in that place, uh, the other night. And they just, it just, you know, half the fire department was there, and it's just, uh, I, it's exactly what you're talking about. Uh, but when I when I sing that Walk Alone song, man, you can just, it wouldn't have dry in the house, and, you know, you can just tell they're just going to eat this up, um, eat this up, and it's just going to help. It's just going to help. Uh, and if it helps one person, if it helps one person with the hook of the song, if you need somebody, call somebody. Uh, you know, I mean, I've done my job with, you know, I was blessed with the words to write it down. If, you know, if I can just help save one person, you know, from, from going through that, but uh, that's going to be a good one coming out. Well, that that's the point of making music too, though. I mean, it's you're so right. it's, it's not always about you know you got so many people. It's worried about I want to I want to be on iTunes. I want to be top ten on iTunes, or you know I, I'm convinced that so many people are just blinded by the money aspect of it that they forget the heart and soul of it. But when you do something like that. And you you actually can touch somebody, and you can maybe help one person. Yep. That's a way bigger blessing. Yep. That's that way cooler. I, I know that some of the times that I've shared stuff that has been personal with me about my mental health and stuff, man, it's way cooler than any. And when you get feedback from that, it's way cooler than any check I've ever got. Yep. Yeah, don't don't get me wrong. I like money. Yeah, I, ain't, I am a whore for money, but I love when you get that feeling and the fact that that's the kind of stuff that you're working with and that's the kind of stuff you're putting out or whatever that means you're on the right track and you're taking the stuff that you've been through and the stuff that you know and you're putting it in to your art and that's what's going to set you apart from from anybody i appreciate that that's we're having fun. So we're having fun doing it. And they're all sad songs, man. We're having fun. We're having I fun. Know you did. I, I heard you did redo uh, Midnight Montgomery while ago. It's one of my right. all time favorite. And, man, and, it, I love, and it hits. Listen, I love some Alan good, Jackson, man. bro. Me too, dude. Love some Alan Jackson. And uh, it was always a mentor in my music. And then, you know, what Alan's going through. And, you know, and, uh, man, I hate that he's going through that. But um, we've got something coming, man. I just wanted to do something to give back to what he what he done for me, man. Just just listening to his songs as a teenager and growing up just I mean it made me who I was. It was yeah. music makes you who you are, man. Absolutely. Music's just special. It does. But uh yeah, we're we're proud. I got Cadillac three uh, laying some pedal steel down on there and um you know, hope to get Peter Keys to do the from Skinner. I was with them in Biloxi not too long ago, but I'm hoping to get him to lay down the keys on that thing, but I can't wait to get it out, Josh. I'll get you to spin it, it bro. It's, I will. I will. It sounds good, dude. Uh I was already a huge fan of him and I had Georgette Jones on the show back in January. And uh, I already knew where Alan had like stood up against the CMTs oh, yeah, back in the day. Me. Yes, sir. But she tells a story on the show to where George quit watching the award shows. Yep. Like he didn't want to fucking watch the stuff no more. He didn't like it at all. And uh, she said that um, Nancy was in the other room watching it and she took off running. Alan's yeah. Took off running. And started playing George's song, and she said that George stood up out of his chair, came in there, was crying watching him, and he said that that just meant the absolute world to him. Before before George died, he told Alan never to change. He said that she re she remembered it that 
told him never to change to keep country music what country music is. That's right. And I I love me some fucking Alan Jackson <laughs> boy. Too. I like anybody that rebels. That's that's my thing with country music is I'm fine with country music changing. But I want the people that have always done traditional country, I want there to be a home for it still. Mm-hmm. I want people to still feel like they can do it. I still want the Travis Tritts, the the um, Tracy Lawrences, the Gary Allens, the Allen Jacksons, the folks like that. still want them to put out traditional-ass country, mm-hmm. the stuff that I love. I love a bunch of this new shit. I probably listen to Morgan Wallen's new album more than I listen to anything else lately because it's good. But... That old stuff, man, man, shit. I was on the golf course just the other day, and I had nothing but Whitley on. Whitley's my all-time fave. Yep. And whether it's a sad song, happy song, whatever. Yep. And you just don't get that shit no more. And I wish more people would write and play that real shit because that's all it was. It's the life that we live. Country music really ain't a genre of music to me. It's the way of life. That's right. And that's why I identify with it so much. It's what I've lived for 35 years now. That's why, that's why I love it. And it seems like everything that you've played me and everything that you've talked about, you're doing real country music. So you'll fit in just fine with all of us. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here, and I'm, I'm looking forward to this journey for sure. Well, cool. Well, real quick, uh, Tell them any dates you got coming up and drop your social media handles. Let's see here. Um, I'm doing a little thing on Saturday uh, in Jackson. It's called Bonfires and Blessings. We're going to do a big country concert out there on Highway 16. You can't miss it there. Uh, If you want some more information on that, you can go to officialmarkware.com. But after that, uh, we're going to be down in, um, we're going to actually go to uh, Cosmel, Mexico. On Royal Caribbean's hired us to do a couple of shows while we're cruising over to Mexico. And we'll come back and do some show uh, at Lenny Cooper's place in Skyline in Columbia, South Carolina. And then um, we'll come back home to the Griffin Opera on May 20th. Um, for uh, I think there's 40 tickets left for that at the Griffin Opera. So um, it's a really cool place. We're in downtown Griffin. Uh, they say Doc Holliday was, uh, that was part oh, of the cool. Gentleman's Club. was the actual theater. It was built in the 1800s. And they've turned it into just uh, singer-songwriters and, um, and country music and and um, so, so it's a good place that it got going over there. And then in uh, the end of May, we kick off our summer concert series at Jackson Lake. And uh, it's something, again, that Kim and I do. She wasn't real a fan of it at first, but I turned my whole front yard there on the lake into <laughs> a full production concert. And so we put a big stage, Southern Stage, and uh, sponsors us stage and lights. Uh, we've had Bo Bice, Brian Martin, uh, Georgia Landscaper, myself. Um, I mean, we had a bunch when, of artists came when out. When is that? May 28th. Um, okay. And I think Lenny Cooper is coming to the May 28th show, but I have to confirm that. Well, let, let, me know if you need, some mud. let me know if you need some more folks for that. Okay. Uh, it's a great time. Uh, it's all sponsored by the community. I, I grab sponsorship for it because it's about 40 grand, as you know, okay. to put on a concert That's like that. Fucking literally it is. Um, but it's something we give back to the community, and it's nothing better on the holidays. Man, DNR loves it because all the boats are just sitting still. They're not yeah. having the food. They're not pulling tubes. And I think 4th of July, we had 4,000 boats. They told us more boats launched the 4th of July last year in that lake than in the history of Jackson Lake. Goodness gracious. And uh, we was able to pick up enough sponsors to put about $30,000 worth of fireworks in there after the show. So um, it's just getting bigger and bigger. It's Kim and I's seventh year of uh, doing the concert there at the house. And uh, it's taken her a little while to warm up to it. But now she's starting to invite some of her friends to it and stuff over there. And uh, she's still locking the front door, wanting nobody to go through the house <laughs> while, while I'm over there. But... Uh, we're having to order porta potties, but uh, yeah, man, it's, it's a good time. So that's what we got going on just to May. But got got a few agents working for us trying to get us. We got some offers out in Utah and New Mexico and Texas. Um, got some offers on the table out there, but nothing's really came through yet. But we're hoping you can find me on TikTok, Mware Music, um, Mware Music, uh, Instagram's Mware Music, Facebook's Mark Ware Music. Um, my personal page is Mark Ware. You can. You go in there a lot of a lot of times. I stay on my personal page more than I do my music page, but um, I suck at social media, bro. I Don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna help you I with that. We're gonna media. we're gonna help you with that. By the time some of my uh, my friends that's got these big social media followings here, this episode, 
They're they going to fall in love with you. You ain't going to have to worry about that pre- too much. We're going to turn that 40 and put a zero oh, on it. Oh, yeah. We're going we're gonna to put some numbers on that. <laughs> um, but, man, I, I appreciate you coming to hang out I for a little it. bit. And, uh, man, um, anything we can do to help you? you know, Mark we, off your calendar for the lake. Oh, yeah. And by the way, folks. By the way, folks, uh, May the 24th, because he didn't drop this, he'll be playing a Raising Grace round at Live Oak in oh, Nashville. Yes. I forgot about that. He yeah, sure will. yeah. He'll be, he'll, be, uh, he'll be playing that for us. So, uh, guys, don't miss that. And don't miss next week in Nashville, April the 12th, Raising Grace round at Live Oak 2-6 to six in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, that's it, man. You got anything else to say before we get out of here? No, man. Nice to meet you guys. Look forward to seeing you again, Josh. And uh, make sure you hug that little girl every day, man. Hold her tight. That's be my thing too. Just looking at you, just you just trying to any, gut punch me right here at get, the end. No, That's you start talking about your daughter too, man. Oh. Like, I've, I've watched y'all. I've watched Oof. y'all. Yeah, just listen. Well, that, don't sweat the small stuff. That's what I tell you. Don't sweat the small stuff at all because it don't matter. Well, you just small stuff. You just matters, if bro. you hadn't already made ten thousand people cry already, you just did. So. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, please don't just go look up one of his songs. Go look up his whole catalog like we always do. Share and like all of his stuff. Go subscribe to anything that he's got and be looking out for new music coming soon from Mr. Mark Ware. I will see you guys later. At Kroger, we want our fresh produce to meet your expectations, which is why we're dedicated to doing up to a 27-point inspection on our fruits and veggies, checking for things like scarring. In fact, only the best produce, like zesty oranges and crisp carrots, reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh, our higher standards mean fresher produce. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone.